Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about the normal occipitalis. When viewed from the behind, the skull presents this horseshoe-shaped outline, which extends from the calvaria, connecting the tips of the mastoid process of both the sides. This is your norma occipitalis. At the base of the skull, the intermastoid line extends somewhat horizontally across the occipital condyles and the foramen magnum. The norma occipitalis is formed by the parts of the parietal bone. So here we have the parietal bone, then the squamous part of the occipital and the mastoid part of the temporal bone. The sagittal and the lambdoid sutures here we have this is the lambdoid suture and this is the sagittal suture they are meeting at this point this is known as lambda this at the lower end of the lambdoid suture these three bones that is parietal occipital and mastoid part they meet this point and on the lateral side these three bones again these are forming at a meeting point this meeting point is known as asterion so it is lying on the lateral side and lambda is lying on the midline so these are the two different points for the meeting point of these bones this is the lambda which is the meeting point of the two parietal and the occipital bones and this is the asterion here we have the meeting point of the mastoid process the parietal and the occipital bones then there is a mastoid foramina so here we have this mastoid foramina and the mastoid process this mastoid process sorry this mastoid foramina this is giving passage for emissary vein which is connecting the sigmoid sinus with the posterior auricular vein and the meningeal branch of occipital artery then we have the external occipital protuberance in the midline so this is the external occipital protuberance it is about midway between the lambda and the foramen magnum so this is the lambda and this is the foramen magnum so it is at the midline midpoint of these two structures that is the lambda and the foramen magnum the most salient feature of this protuberance is the ineon so the most convex point of this structure is known as ineon the superior nuchal line the arch bilaterally from the protuberance to the rough outer surface of the mastoid process so these are the two super superior nuchal lines on both the sides so here we can see the superior nuchal lines these lines forms the boundary between the scalp and the neck the superior nuchal lines gives attachment entirely to the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and in the lateral part it gives insertion to the posterior fibers of sternocleidomastoid and in the medial part it is giving origin to the trapezius muscle then we have the highest nuchal lines so these are the highest nuchal lines above the superior nuchal lines they extend from the external protuberance above the super, superior nuchal lines these highest nuchal lines gives attachment medially to the glia aponeurotica and lateral side to the occipital belly of occipital frontalis muscle this occipital external crest here we have the ox external occipital crest which is extending from the ineon up to the foramen magnum this gives attachment to the ligamentum nuchae from the midpoint of the external occipital crest there are again the arching lines these are known as inferior nuchal lines so these are the inferior nuchal lines so this is all about the norma occipitalis i hope you understand well thanks for watching